Hello everyone, Patrick and Jay's first video to GMA Friday for today's first video. As always on a Friday, we're having a detailed look at the weather for the month ahead with the Japanese and CFS V2 uh, models. Later on today, we're going to um, have a look at uh, the next week to 10 days um, in terms of the uh, what could be severely cold weather that's coming up next week. And I suspect there'll be an update tonight going through the midday runs of the models for you uh, once again. But kicking it all off will be... Uh, um, JMA Friday. Just say a busy weekend of updates coming up as well. So tomorrow, to start off with, we'll have the uh, spring uh, season one around at the third and final one of those. Tomorrow as well, we'll also have a weekend forecast. Of course, that's going to be one of the most interesting weekend forecasts we've ever done uh, at Gazzo Vince, I would have thought, going back to um, 2012. Uh, and uh, then on Sunday, we've got the actual spring forecast itself. And as well as all of the updates well over weekend, uh, there's going to be a live event, a live chat with uh, myself and Quantum on Sunday evening at 5 o'clock. We'll be going live to discuss um, the chances of uh, severely cold weather next week and heavy snow too. It'll be interactive. The video will be posted here on Gaz Weather Vids, but uh, I'll also post the video on Twitter and Facebook as well. Um, so uh, you'll be able to ask your questions. We probably won't be able to answer everybody's questions because I assume there'll be a lot of interest. Um, but we'll answer as many questions as we can uh, and try to determine if uh, you're going to get a little bit of snow or maybe a lot of snow um, through the course of uh, next week. So that's five o'clock Sunday start time. Put it in your diary. It's going to be a very interesting live chat indeed. But kicking off this weekend of updates, um, if you can include Friday as a weekend, uh, we've got JMA Friday. So we're going to start off having a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly flow charts from the North Pole view down, broken down into weekly periods. The first week period is taking us from this week, the 23rd of February through to the 2nd of March. Orange and red extrapolates to above average heights, that's high pressure, and blue to below average heights, that's low pressure. So in the week ahead, we find that we've got um, below average heights to our south and uh, southeast as well. And then we've got a very strong blocking signal. We've got this orange mass up here from Greenland to Scandinavia. And so the upshot is that we're bringing in very cold uh, east to northeasterly winds. The air is originating from Siberia. It's flooding across um, Europe from Russia. And that just looks really cold and very wintry. In the week ahead. We go through to week two. This takes us from the 2nd through to the 9th of March. And it's still in cold. The blocking seal is moving over more towards Greenland um, and uh, Canada there. Uh, below average heights are to our south. The jet stream is becoming... Uh, it's coming a little bit further north, but even so, we're still on the cold side of the jet stream. We're still pulling the air in from the north. That, again, looks perhaps not quite as cold as week one, but week two, the first week of March, is still looking cold and potentially very wintry as well. Then we go through to weeks three and four. This takes us from the 9th through to 23rd of March. And signs of a change here. We are beginning to lose a blocking signal. Low pressures in the Atlantic and coming over the UK. And uh, the jet stream also is starting to shift back north again. It's a slow old process, but very gradually we're easing the blocking signal. We're easing out of that really cold and abnormally blocked pattern. And we're beginning to revert to a more typical type Atlantic um, pattern. And it's becoming less cold. I wouldn't necessarily say it's become milder, but it's certainly becoming less cold. And we will be shifting from uh, sort of snow back towards rain there through um, weeks three and four, night 23rd of March. Bear in mind, it's a two-weekly anomaly, so it could be transitional. You might still have a lot of cold weather, for example, and wintry weather in week three. And then week four might finally be the week that we break out of the cold and block pattern. You never quite know with a two-weekly anomaly. 
But the signs there that mid-March sh should start to see the uh, coldest, snowiest of the weather beginning to ease back uh, a little bit. You have to say hats off to the JMA because I think this was the first model, certainly in the longer range, um, that saw the chance of uh, substantially cold weather coming up at the end of February. I think the first signs of it within January and Friday was around three or four weeks ago, actually, with the J JMA model. So... Um, hats off to the Japanese Meteorological Agency and their model. Right, have a look at the temperature and precipitation anomalies that go with those uh, height anomalies now. So the British Isles on this view is in the top right-hand corner of the chart as you are looking at it. The uh, week 1, 500 millibar height anomaly has that deep area of below average heights to ourselves. You can't see the pole, but we know there's a really strong blocking signal going on uh, up here. The temperature uh, anomaly, let's do temperatures first of all, for the uh, week ahead comes out really significantly cold now. If you look at this, we've got those deep blue colours there over UK and over majority of Europe as well. That's taking temperature anomalies um, to four degrees or lower below average. So really, really plunging into the freezer in the week ahead for many parts of Europe. Precipitation anomalies are coming out dry and average, so very dry. Uh, very cold, I should say, but dry uh, in the week ahead. We move through to uh, week two, which takes us from the 2nd to the 9th of March. Jet stream comes a little bit further northwards, but still generally coming to the south of the UK, placing us, therefore, on the cold side of the jet stream. Precipitation is increasing a little bit, especially so for England and Wales. And with temperature anomalies, you would assume still cold, there is a risk of substantial snow. Um, temperature anomalies for the first week of March are coming out colder than average, not as severely cold as in week one. But nevertheless, it's still substantially colder than average and uh, still the risk, or probably an increased risk actually, of snow there through that first week of March. And then we go through to weeks three and four with below average heights still to our west and the jet stream slowly but surely starting to inch its way further northwards. That means the temperature anomaly is very, very gradually recovering. It's going uh, back closer to average uh, so we're coming out of those very cold temperatures, but it's still nothing to get excited about, but a recovery in temperatures is starting to take place there through to the middle of March, that's from the 9th to the 23rd, and it's also turning more unsettled as well, so um, precipitation going above average, and as the temperatures recover, I think we would be shifting more from snow over towards rain as we get into the middle part of March. So that's the JMA. What about surface V2? These again, 500 millibar heights broken down into week periods. The first week period takes us from the 23rd of February to the 3rd of March. Uh, uh, the 1st of March, I should say. A strong blocking signal here to our north and northeast with below average heights to our south. And the wind is coming in and the air is coming in from the Arctic and from Siberia. So it looks bitterly cold in the week ahead with those easy wings. Week two shows that retrogression has taken place. So instead of the ridge being centred over Scandinavia or the block being centred over Scandinavia, it's now centred over Greenland with below average heights underneath it. Still on the cold side of the jet stream, although it's a little bit further northwards, but still pulling in very cold air from the north and from the east as well. So both models in agreement that the next two weeks we're really in for it in terms of in terms of really cold and also potentially uh, very wintry weather. Week uh, three, which is the 9th to the 15th of March, uh, shows that the is beginning to shift back north again. The blocky signal is still there, but it's more over towards Canada. Uh, so we're losing the blocky signal. The blocky signal is easing allowing the jet stream to just start to inch back northwards again. Although for the far north of the country, actually, we're still very close to being uh, really cold for northern parts of Scotland. But I think the temperatures there through, the, um, through week three, the night to the 15th of March, I think the temperatures are slowly starting to uh, recover. And then we go through to week four, which is the 16th, 22nd of March, uh, and another change, a bit at odds with the JMA now, it is four weeks away, is that we've got above average heights beginning to return 
close to Iceland. So the blocking signal may be starting to come back a little bit and possibly beginning to pull the wind back into the northeast. Not sure about that. Uh, temperature anomalies from the CFSV2 for the week ahead, the 23rd through to the 1st of March. Substantially cold on average for the UK. All of Europe and Russia being plunged into the freezer as well. We're going down below to um, sort of four degrees or more below average with our temperature anomaly there. Looks very, very cold indeed for the final week of February. Then we go through to week two, which is the 2nd to the 8th of March. Substantially cold on average for the UK. Substantially cold on average for much of Europe as well. Although Spain is beginning to show a recovery in uh, temperatures. Week three is still a little bit colder than average. This is from the 9th to the 15th of March. Although the anomaly is much less so uh, as the jet stream is beginning to push back or pull back uh, northwards once again. And then week four temperature anomaly is going from the 16th of March to 22nd of March. They are coming out then closer to average. Precipitation looks like this. The coming week is substantially drier than average. So very cold but dry in the week ahead. Remember any precipitation that does fall is likely to be falling as snow. And this won't pick up um, snow showers and embedded troughs coming in with those really cold easterly winds. So I suspect more precipitation around and most of it snow than um, that is suggesting in the week ahead. Then we go through to uh, week two which is close to average to the south um, uh, but still driving average up in the north uh, and again any precipitation in that week is likely to be mainly snow once more. Week three looks like that. The signal's beginning to weaken, but overall still generally average to perhaps a little bit on the driving average side for the north. And then by week four, we've pretty much lost the signal now. And so the precipitation anomaly in week four is just coming out close to uh, average. So what we can take from this is that uh, it's going to be pretty bad for the next couple of weeks, especially next week, looking very cold on both of these long range models uh, and that possibly extending into the first week of March as well. So weeks one and two, final week of February, the first week of March, looking very, maybe even severely cold. Uh, and also increasing risk of snow as well. Then through weeks three and four, further into March, we gradually lift out of that very abnormally blocked and cold weather. We get a slow recovery in um, the temperature as the jet stream begins to inch its way back northwards again. Although the CFS by week four is suggesting maybe the chance of a return to a bit of blocking around Iceland. So it might be that the cold weather will ease a little bit through the middle of March, then maybe strike us again later on in the month. That's very speculative. But concentrate on the next two weeks, really. They're looking pretty bad, I have to say. And we'll have more on that in today's uh, second video update, which will be coming up this afternoon, we'll look at weather next week's 10 days, and obviously that will bring you up to date with all of the latest model runs in terms of easterly winds and heavy snow next week. That's all for now. Come back later on. Bye for now.